I said the Chinese person is using or map on the, the equivalent numbers um, into a form that a computer will be able to understand. The bottom line is this, typically a table, right? Unique, uh, using, if it's ASCII, then you're looking at the ASCII table that you're using to provide the mapping. So just as an example here, I mean, people last, last year had a bit of confusion, and so we, we, we did a bit of a simple walkthrough using the ASCII table to say, how would we be able to derive the binary equivalent of ICT 1110, for instance, right, using the ASCII table? All we have to do is, you know, gain access to our table, and we know that ICT, in this case, is our uppercase letters. We have three uppercase alphabetical letters, I, C, and T. We have the number, the number one represented three times, or the symbol one represented three times, the symbol zero represented once, and more importantly, there's a space after the T, between the T and the one, right? So effectively, we have a total of about eight symbols that would need to represent for us to get the equivalent of what a computer will be able to see, right? Um, it's as simple as really, we go and look at our ASCII table to find the uppercase letter I. We notice that the uppercase letter I is represented by the decimal 73 or the hex number 49. What we do is we convert the hex number 49 or the, the, the decimal 73 into binary using 8-bit representation. This is what we end up with. This will be our I. And then we, we look at our ASCII table to find C. We look at the hex or the decimal representation and then convert this to binary Again, using 8-bit representation. Why 8-bit representation? Because we've been told that ASCII uses 8 bits. Right. Again, there's a difference between lowercase c and uppercase c in this case, right? Not that it matters, we're just trying to showcase an example of how a computer gets to interpret this. We search for the t in the ASCII table, we see that it maps directly to the decimal number 84. So the question would be, what is 84 in binary? Or if you're using an ASCII table that has a hex equivalent, what is hex 54 in binary? Yeah, we find that this is the equivalent number there. Eight bit representation, okay? We check for one. One is right here and zero, actually. We just combine them together. We notice that one is represented by hex number 49. 49 in binary is that, using eight bit representation. We have three ones, right? Um, and then the zero is represented by the decimal number 48. All you have to do is convert this 48 into binary. This is simple. If you're given, if you're given a table, if, let's say in the exam you have an ASCII table that has both the hex and the decimal, you can choose to use either the decimal to convert to binary or the hex. Uh, me personally, I prefer hex because all I have to do is split the hex number into individual symbols and then use 4-bit representation to derive the binary and then combine them. But if you feel comfortable using repeated division by two, do that, right? If there's ever a question like this in the test or the exam. Is this making sense? But you notice that we, we've represented everything besides, besides the, the space here, right? Um, it turns out the space is just decimal 32 in, the, in, in ASCII or hex 20. Right. We convert it and then we have this. So effectively what, what a computer will see when, when you, you are busy, whatever it is you're doing, let's say you are, I open up a new file and I say, oh, I type in ICT 1110 and I save this. We know that the, when I'm saving this, this operation, there's something happening behind the scenes, right? The instructions being executed, instructions being loaded and executed program has already been loaded into memory, right? The instructions being executed and then I'm going to save this file here. As I'm saving it, for the computer to know what to save, it needs a way to interpret what I want to save. In this case, it's just a file that has this text. But for it to figure out what text I want to save, it needs to convert these things into equivalent um, machine code, things that it understands, right? And then it saves them. Simple enough, I guess. Uh, so computer will see this. I mean, if you've taken time, this, this application has come up a lot, and I did mention that you are free to go out there and download other computer application software tools that could allow you to view um, things that are in human readable format into, let's say, hexadecimal machine code. So I'm using um, 
octeta here. And you notice if I load this file in this, um, in this application, I get to see the equivalent of what I have in the file as ones and zeros. And it's like a direct mapping of what I have here. I, I mean, if you're interested in understanding this a lot more, you can just go out and play around with simple files, just type in maybe one character and see what a computer sees and whatnot, right? But you need like some sort of application that will be a hex dump for you. Um, okay, and then just to emphasize, really try and remind us that if we are saying we're using 8-bit representation for, for a file that will have the text ICT space 1110, and we're using 8-bit representation, then what we expect is, 8 bits is just one byte, right? What we expect is for the file to have a size of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So this is what we're trying to show here. The fact that if we save this simple file, right? And then check its size on disk, you notice that it corresponds to the contents that are in here. Size is eight bytes. 